This is the Work Smart Hypnosis Podcast, session number 89, Lessons Learned from Strength Training. Welcome to the Work Smart Hypnosis Podcast with Jason Lynette, your professional resource for hypnosis training and outstanding business success. Here's your host, Jason Lynette. Welcome back. Jason Lynette here with a solo session, just you and I here discussing something that's, well, rather personal to me. And it's a journey that I've been on for, I'd say, in some form for the last three or four years, though very seriously now for about a year at this point. And what's interesting is as I've developed a passion, as I've developed a hobby, if you want to call it that, in strength training, in in weightlifting, and call it in some form of bodybuilding perhaps, there are several mindsets, philosophies, and just sort of points of view that have come out of this experience that I would share have influenced my process working with clients. So I'm sharing with this with you, and again, if you are somebody who these are not your interests, these are not your passions, I'd encourage you even more to listen to this specific session. Because there are some themes that have come out of this training that I've been going through that have really influenced my effectiveness with clients. The communication modes, the the points of view, the ways to harness successes, the ways to reframe things that may have been potential setbacks. The origin story behind most of this I may have shared here in some format, that you rewind the story back about three, four years ago. And several life events had begun to pile up, one of which carrying a newborn baby up the stairs and being horribly out of breath. And uh, to say it in professional medical terms, realizing, quote, hey, this sucks, I should do something about this. And that's about the first point in time where I lost about 30 or 40 pounds of fat. And over time, I had, I described it this way, I had a rather embarrassing habit of spraining my back. I kept picking things up in a very clumsy way, and I was weak, and the sort of the combination of the two, I would just rip something somewhere in my back, and I'd be horribly in pain. There's a fun experience in GH convention, I think, in 2011, 2012. Oh, I was taking Lisa Halpin's hypno hypno coaching course, and I went to just simply move a chair, which then resulted in sitting in horrible, excruciating pain for two days. So taking the nod from several professionals I had sought out, began to focus on better health, better nutrition, better mindsets, and the result of which is I haven't had an injury like that ever since. Now that I've said that, I will probably horribly hurt myself with the next week. How's that for positive suggestion? So I'd give you uh, two simple expectations. This is about to launch into some content I want to share with you here. The first is, of course, the obvious disclaimer. I am not a expert. I am not a resource, really, in terms of, let's call it nutritional science and exercise physiology. So the obvious f- phrase should be consult with a appropriate professional, and you should not necessarily take these things that I've learned as specific tips or, quote, advice to go off and do what I've done, though I can point you in the resources if you message me privately. I'd be happy to point you in the right direction in terms of where I've learned. Instead, the main point of view are the philosophies, the perspectives, the shifts in critical thinking that have resulted in this time that I've now spent just, well, literally working on myself. The other statement is, even if strength training weightlifting, bodybuilding, whatever you want to call it, is something that you have absolutely zero interest in, you are especially the one I want you to listen to this entire program all the way straight through. Because there, again, are some philosophies, perspectives, and points of view that have come out of this experience I've been on really passionately for the last year that I know will influence your change process with your clients. So let's jump right in. This is Jason Lynette with session number 89, Lessons Learned. From strength training. All right, let's begin. Now, there's a couple of bullet points here, along with several sub points underneath it. And again, at the same time, I will give you the specifics of how it's applied to my personal training, though, on the other side of things, we will specifically apply these concepts to working with clients. So, the first point success comes with consistency. Once again, success comes with consistency, and there's something to be said, and I've I've said that as I've gone through this journey myself, as I've worked with my own 
health and fitness, weight loss, hypnosis clients. This has got to be one of the biggest takeaways, one of the biggest themes that has worked its way into my process with clients. And as a result, I have seen much, much better results. So we can phrase this in a positive and a negative way. The positive way uses the negative language though, which would be that one bad day of indulgent eating is not going to change your life. It's going to be okay. This all or nothing mindset, to, to break that mindset with clients that now that they've had this one piece of candy, now that they've indulged in this specific meal, you know, it's that point of view that, again, this all or nothing mindset. Now, there's a, there's a ride to be uh, followed on this one. There's a journey to be, uh, to be aware of, which is that you can suggest the occasional indulgence becomes every reason they do it less, every reason they enjoy it more. Why do I say that? Because you don't want to be suggesting that these indulgences are perfectly fine because then you've got the person who's doing it four or five times a week and then that's not successful and that's the wrong kind of consistency. So the flip side of this is that one good day in the gym, unfortunately, is also not going to change your life. So instead, it's the consistency over time. It's the consistency over this period of time. So it's that mindset that as we go into this, we are looking to build that consistency within the behaviors. So I can simply point to the fact that from, well, at least this year, from January till about, let's say, June, there was not a week that I wasn't in the gym doing my strength training at least three times a week. From June up until now, it's in December now, it's been four times a week just because, again, I've changed the programming, I've changed the goals slightly in that, in that context. So again, to bring in this mindset of consistency, well, you know what, let's apply this to your hypnosis business as well. This is why I talk about do not advertise, instead campaign. And at its core, we're really talking about the same thing, though the difference is it's a philosophy. You know, the advertisement could be the view set, the mindset of I've stuck this thing in a newspaper and I'm going to sit back and hope it works, as opposed to campaigning, which may well begin with the same ad in the newspaper. But the difference is it's drawing them into an experience and getting them to begin to interact with you. And by doing so, that's going to lead into the actual interaction of the business. So again, success comes with consistency. Though the opposite side of that is, of course, that the occasional diversion could also become every reason why we're back on track. So in this journey that I've been on, there was a period of time where the goal was what's called cutting, which is where you're working to maintain muscle and lose body fat. And currently now in a bulking phase where the goal is to build muscle while minimizing fat gain. So the previous phase was all about eating in a deficit, eating less than my body needed. And really since June, this is the big transition that I mentioned just previously, is eating in that surplus. So actually eating above, again, to maximize muscle gain while minimizing fat gain. So the consistency is what makes it work. So I'd point to the mindset that sometimes with a client, the issue is not necessarily the program. You know, there's that phrase that, quote, diets don't work. And the fact is the program would work if the person stayed consistent with it. So inside of our hypnosis process, we can work on building that consistency, building that reliability, which of course may also need to involve peeling away whatever negative held beliefs, whatever limiting blocks, whatever subconscious resistance may be there. So Again, the takeaway, success comes with consistency. There is that occasional diversion, yet we can harness that as every reason why we don't have to live that way anymore. This is especially helpful information as we're now working around the holidays. And I've had the experience many times where someone would call me in early October for weight loss and their language is, yeah, but you know, Halloween, Thanksgiving, Christmas, let me go ahead and schedule this for January. When the truth is they can still go through these experiences because if the consistency across the board is the success, then again, one bad day of eating is not going to change their life. Let's move on to the next point of lessons learned. Track your success. There's a mindset that I brought to this that by bringing in this mindset, this is what really worked for me as a consistency strategy 
which is that mindset of becoming the human guinea pig, of really letting it become that personal science experiment. So along the way, there were several things that I did, let's say as personal challenges, to really learn what would be the result of doing that. So for example, for a period of like maybe two months, I woke up every morning, took care of the natural business, let your imagination fill in the gaps, and then consistently weighed myself every single day. So the real result of that is something that really has helped influence my work working with clients. Because the truth is, weight is only a marker. Weight is only a specific piece of evidence of that specific moment of that specific point in time. You want the biggest lesson learning on, you want the biggest lesson to learn on this. Step on a scale yourself. Take note of the number. Step off the scale. Drink 16 ounces of water. Step back on. It's going to say you were a pound heavier. Now, are you a pound fatter? No, of course not. You are a pound heavier. So there's a concept of the ways that our weight will regulate up and down. And it's not necessarily just body fat up and down, muscle up and down. It's the body is doing a recomposition. So many amazing factors that as I was aware of foods that I ate, this marker that, again, through the tracking of the different uh, parameters of this, to see the example that, well, I'd give you a simple one right now. We went to Six Flags with the kids over the weekend. And for dinner, I actually had something that could be argued would be relatively healthy compared to most other options at a theme park, which was that I had this giant turkey leg. I had peeled the skin off and I had that with green beans. As I like to say, this specific meal has, quote, enough sodium to blind a mule. <laughs> it is so freaking salty that I think I drank like four or five whole bottles of water in the next couple of hours that, you know, the next day I could barely put on or take off my wedding ring as I was uh, getting uh, ready in the morning. And just the scale naturally showed a higher number. Now, I know I did not eat enough to gain a full pound or actually three pounds of body fat. So it's, again, this consistency of tracking so the experience of picking something and becoming, becoming curious about it, let's bring that mindset into it. Over this period of time, it's a place where I'm often cautious around working with clients and suggesting literal behaviors. I would rather have a client make their own discoveries and epiphanies, and that way they own their own success. So by way of conversational hypnosis by way of metaphor, there's a beautiful moment where a client of mine decided, she goes, you know what? I'm going to track everything I eat in my fitness pal. It's a well-known app for uh, tracking your eating. She goes, I'm going to track everything in that app for at least the next three weeks just to see what happens. And her discovery was an interesting one. She goes, if I was eating foods that I prepared for myself, it was rather difficult to go over 600 calories per meal. She goes, and that's about what the math says I should be eating for every meal to reach the desired weight I want to get to. So her biggest takeaway was this lesson of, through the tracking, getting to this place of realizing that if she cooked for herself, one, it was actually a whole lot more affordable. And second of all, it was rather difficult to overeat. There's a, there's a brief story of a guy who I worked with that the disclaimer that I gave him, it was when you tell the story, you have to preface it with the hypnotist did not tell me to do this. This was my idea. This was a guy who used to eat every single meal going through the drive through I mean, massively caloric, fried, unhealthy, processed items. He was eating every meal and he started to pack a lunch. He started to cook his own meals. And the wonderful discovery is that he used to say, I didn't have the time. And now he would just wake up maybe 15 minutes early. And as the oven was on, there's, there's a phrase I'll share here that I, I use the phrase of, I steal from my clients all the time. And this was definitely a guy that I quote, modeled the excellence of, as he put it, yeah, if something was in the oven, I refused to have only one thing in the oven. So there he was cooking dinner. Yet meanwhile, the next level down in the oven his lunches for the next several days were then being prepped. And ever since he said that in my office, I'm holding back the back of my commentary going, oh, that's a good idea. And I've done that ever since. So it was, his thing was, his basic drive-through meal was about 1,500 calories. 
And you know the story of the dad who catches the son smoking a cigarette and makes him smoke the whole pack so he'd learn a lesson? Okay, again, I made him insist that uh, if he told the story, I, I didn't tell him to do this. This was his own random idea. He decided to, quote, teach himself a lesson as one day he prepped for himself 1,500 calories of chicken breast, broccoli, and sweet potatoes. Off the top of my head, a pound of cooked chicken breast is about maybe 400 calories. A pound of uh, sweet potatoes cooked, if I'm remembering right, is like maybe 300, also 400 or so, and the broccoli is probably about 100 calories. So the whole thing basically tripled that roughly, or two and a half times that. We're, we're talking a good six pounds of food, if I'm getting the math right in my head, which needless to say, um, he didn't make his way through that before it was uh, taking its revenge and escaping, we'll say it politely. Though from that day, it was that mindset, again, like this other woman, of it was hard to overeat if he was eating food rather than food products. So track your success. There's something to be said about developing just a, I, I call it nerdery, de developing just this curiosity, which again, there's tips and strategies we can fold in with our clients. But at the same time, what about our businesses? Well, you've likely heard me say on other platforms, you really don't know your results until you test it for yourself. So the real mindset here is to pick something and really consistently do it and track the results. And by doing so, this is how we can really measure whether or not something is working for us. So let's move on to the next uh, bullet point here, which is one of my favorite ones. Complicated isn't better. There is such an amazing, such an amazing complication of strategies inside of this. And again, I am not a nutritionist. I do not claim to be. I'm only referencing specific things you can track down for yourself. There is a beautiful, beautiful ebook, which I highly, highly encourage reading, which even if you don't decide to follow the strategy that this man suggests, the opening chapter of his ebook is perhaps some of the best writing I've ever seen in the health and fitness industry. His name is Brad Pilon, P-I-L-O-N. He's out of Canada, I believe. And the name of his book is Eat, Stop, Eat. And in the opening chapter, he does this incredible job of basically debunking so much of the complication inside of the nutritional industries, breaking it all down to very simple concepts, very simple points of view. Look, this is the way people gain weight, and this is the way people lose weight end of story, is the basic gist of what he writes. And if you're curious, buy his ebook. It's outstanding. Not necessarily a recommendation to do his program, though I've done it and it's worked wonders for me. The opening chapter, just for the read, worth every penny he sells that ebook for. Though this starts to fold into so many other things. Complicated isn't better. So as we look at this idea of complication, it's how... There, there's a moment where I hired a personal trainer and the specific goal was here is the exact lifting that I want to do with weights. And instead I'm being put through this whole circuit of a lot of other smaller things. So the overcomplication of something for the mindset of that's going to be better when instead the system that I wanted to follow was more of what's called heavy compound lifts, which are the main weightlifting moves, a, a bench press, a heavy squat, a deadlift, and a pull-up or chin-up. So these specific compound movements, which are engaging larger muscle groups, hitting those smaller groups. So it's where, surprisingly, I'm in and out of the gym with the training that I do, and usually a matter of 45 to 60 minutes. And again, giving reference to things that I've researched for myself and referencing these things here, rather than saying, this is my expertise, of course not. But it's this point of view that a lot of the research would say, do you do the heaviest stuff and then do long pauses, or do you do lighter work with no pauses? And at the end of the day, it turns out they both had similar results given the research that I've looked into. So again, Success comes with consistency. Pick one goal and follow it. But this mindset of overcomplicating things, this is something that I really, really grew to appreciate as I was more interested in the endurance running, as I was doing about a year or so ago, which would be that here's an industry of people who are buying all these extra things 
these gel packs, these supplements, these uh, runner's belts, these specific pieces of clothing. And the amazing thing is that they never once gave themselves the chance to do this type of running, this type of training without the gadgets, you know, without doing the endurance gels, without this special weight belt. What if I get thirsty when there's water stations throughout the entire run? And I'm not saying these things are never necessary. There's benefits and there's setbacks to everything. But again, it's this mindset of, I often would crack the joke around, it'd be as if a person is wearing belts, suspenders, and pants that are three sizes too tight to keep their pants from falling down. They are, in the words of the magician, they are running when they are not being chased. So this illusion of making things more complicated, meaning that I'm doing things better, when the simplicity is often going to be just as effective. So as we look at the places where we're perhaps overcomplicating our lives, well, with clients, it's a place where what is the one thing that has to happen? There's a future pacing strategy that I'll often use with clients that we can future pace to that place that's a year from now and you've achieved your goals. But I like the future pace to be it's a week from now. And you're back here in this office next week as we're already scheduled and become aware of the feedback of the one thing you have done differently that is confirmed for you. Things are going to be different. Things are going to be better now. So to mark towards that one place of success and really harness that within our businesses, you know, in a previous session, all about active and passive strategies, this mindset that if we overcomplicate things in a passive strategy with all these Facebook ads and all these different tracking systems that are outstanding, and I use the heck out of them, though I tell you, complicated isn't always better. Just simply getting out into your community and talking about hypnosis, just getting out there and simply being seen can get the business rolling in faster than anything else. So be on the lookout for places where you're complicating things only really for the sake of complication. Which leads into the next point, the mindset of embrace micro successes. So small wins are still wins, and you should really harness everything as an asset. I'd give you the specific of this for myself. The, the style of strength training that I'm doing is based on what's called a double progression system. So there's a desired number of reps, and there's a desired number of, of the weight. So for example, I can give one this morning, uh, doing something, uh, exercise called a deadlift where the barbell's on the ground and I had the weight loaded on there and my set list number is to hit 10. So as I can lift up that barbell using the proper form and do that for 10 reps, that's when I then increase the weight, at which point it's going to be heavier and I may need to, I may not be able to hit all 10 reps which means that maybe as it was last week, I had increased the weight. I only could do seven. And then this morning, somehow jumping a bit of a whoosh in strength, as they would say, suddenly I did 11 with 280 pounds, which is kind of fun because that's about a little over twice my body weight right now. So again, it's still a success. And the other mindset would be that inside of this, that even though it didn't hit that 10, the fact that I did it for seven times at a heavier weight that was still a success. So everything becomes an asset. And micro successes are not necessarily just these numerical things. So early on, the one lift that I had the biggest challenge with was a heavy barbell squat, putting a barbell on my upper back, right lower part of my neck, and doing a full body squat down, the uh, hips going to a point below the knees, breaking parallel, and then pushing right back up while standing. And it's something that I just did not have the coordination in terms of the safety, the mechanics of doing that. So there's a point in time, and this is a nice lesson that's come out of it, where we sometimes just have to reset, which is where I dropped the ego of the weight being a relatively high number, reduced it down to simply work on form. And even though the mindset then was getting the form correct, that was still a success. So tracking wins whenever we have them, which the simplest one is the franchise goals gym. You walk in the door and the little sticker on the glass door says showing up is half the battle. You know, we're there. We're doing it. So embracing micro successes. This could be even going back to the health and nutrition side of things. 
the client who changes their breakfast and their breakfast is now consistently better. And now we're working on bringing in the other parts of the day. Though very often the biggest factor that I tend to work with people is this whole pattern of nighttime snacking, not for the thermodynamic science of the fact that it's digesting differently. No, instead it's the fact that they're eating when they're not even hungry and we just got to curb that entire behavior. So here's the night where they had less. Okay. It's a still a success. It may be a micro success, but now in the Dave Elman style, the foot is now in the door and we can now begin that progression. So really it's to harness everything as an asset and to fold every success in as if that's how it's been, which be, builds into this next concept of don't expect personal records on each trip. The concept of the PR, the personal record is one that the strength trainer is often chasing. So I had never done the 10 reps of 280 pounds on a deadlift until this morning, which Yay, I did that. The, the main reason I point that out is that I might not hit that PR next week. And um, in the sequence that I did this morning, I did not hit a new PR on another lift, on another one I did though. So what's the mindset here? The real mindset that I've really come to appreciate, and this has folded its way in working with my clients, this philosophy that everything has a result somewhere in the body. So maybe here's a day that I did not progress. Okay. Though the phrase is, that's not necessarily a setback. It may mean that I'm just maintaining strength at that point in time rather than building strength. And just the maintenance of that is still a micro success. So some days will be personal records. Others are just maintaining. Though again, the mindset that everything has a result somewhere in the body. And even bring this into a more mindful style of eating with your clients that now as they're eating, they're aware of the nutrition going through their body as they're exercising, they can feel their body responding in a, in a healthy way. Though again, this philosophy that everything has a result somewhere in the body by folding that in, it, it's really helped my clients to become one that their mindset is focused on more of these micro wins, more of these successes that not necessarily every single day they step on the scale and the number is lower because the scale, the number is going to be finicky based on all sorts of factors. It's the consistency over time. You know, the real lesson to be learned from the weight, from the weighing that I mentioned earlier was that it only really had value if I tracked it over a span of time and noticed that the, uh, the sort of arc, the, uh, the curve was going down as it was in the case. So again, that consistency inside of it. So don't expect personal records on each trip. Similar to our businesses, we will have days that are outstandingly successful. The phone keeps ringing, people keep booking. And of course, then there's the next day where the phone doesn't ring at all. Though again, that's every reason to go back into our business systems and really motivate things moving forward. The next point to address here is one that I've probably mentioned here in several uh, podcasts before, because it's a theme that I've really brought into so many other parts of life. And it comes from a man by the name of Pavel Satsulin. He's the Russian gymnast who's responsible for why we as Americans know what a kettlebell is. And the phrase is to reframe exercise or working out as practice. From the specific style of what I've been doing to chase the calorie burn from exercise was not the goal. The goal of the lifting was either to build or maintain muscle and all of the either weight gain as it is now for building muscle or weight loss as it was for burning fat, that always came down to the actual eating. That came down to the nutrition. You know, the phrase is, and I unfortunately he hesitate at times to go into this conversation, though it's a necessary evil, the person's in the office saying that I eat perfectly fine, yet I just need to exercise more. There are places where that can be true, yet to say it comfortably, if it is a substantial amount of weight to be lost, that cannot really be the only factor. You know, the question would be, what's something you ate that was kind of out of the ordinary that perhaps you can recognize you maybe could have made a better choice? Well, you know, Michelle and I went out to dinner the other night and we ordered bread pudding. Okay. Ballpark. How many calories do you think that would be? Well, it was pretty decadent, so maybe 500. And I'm sitting here right now next to some half marathon uh, medals. And I can tell you from wearing an Apple watch at all of those, 
I would typically burn about 500 active calories by running 13 miles for two hours. Yet meanwhile, we probably polished off that bread pudding uh, in a matter of two minutes because we were late for the movie that we were going out to see that night. So the simple phrase is you cannot outrun a bad diet. So to reframe exercise as working out or practice or even conditioning brings in a different mindset, brings in the mindset of, again, really where I started on this journey was that of building a skill, building a strength. So reframing all of this as practice and then letting the specifics of the body be dictated by how we eat, by how we better feed ourselves, which moves on to an interesting phrase, quote, the weights are supposed to be heavy. And I love that one. It's supposed to be work. You know, yes, in the previous one, I said, don't call it a workout. But again, it is a work out. So this mindset that, yes, I'm the work smart hypnosis guy. Yet again, this place where getting into these places where we still have to put in some effort. You know, I, I could share the anecdote that um, a good friend is now doing uh, websites uh, for people in wellness industries. And I've heard some complaints that someone was going, yeah, but they didn't put any videos on my website. When the answer is, did, did you shoot videos and give them to him? Well, no. Well, how does he know to put them on there? Do you, do you want my videos on your website? Well, no. Well, then again, the weights are supposed to be heavy. You've got to put the work in yourself. So some effort, some focus, some concept moving forward. A couple of more points here. Don't fear what you haven't yet created. This has been an interesting learning lesson. Working with clients, both men and women, there's the fear of I don't want to lift weights because I'm afraid of getting big and bulky. And for that, I would encourage you to catch me at some sort of hypnosis convention and look at the tracking system that I'm using on my phone, the spreadsheet that I'm running, the consistency of being there at seven in the morning, and again, then say, uh, I don't want to do that because I don't want to get bulky. Because it's actually, by my discovery and research, it takes more effort to build muscle than it does to lose fat. And there's an interesting side effect of that, is stepping into this mindset that this thing that used to be perceived as the difficult challenge is now the easier of the two strategies. So there is a concept of what's called, quote, newbie gains, which would be the person who is brand new to weightlifting can easily both build muscle and lose fat at the same time. It's their, if it's their first newbie uh, amateur entrance into this. However, as it gets into a more intermediate skill level, that's when it becomes more challenging to do both at the same time. It can be done, though in most cases, people would say you either want to be in this cutting phase or this bulking phase, which is why I'm coming up on the mark of consistently locking on to saying I'm going to do this bulking phase for 26 weeks, which the eating is more of the mental game, eating in that surplus, that consistency, and doing it in a way to minimize uh, fat gain along the way. But it's this interesting shift to suddenly go, yeah, but then I can do this, but then it's going to be easy to lose the fat. So don't fear what you haven't yet created. This really rang true this morning. I did not intervene because it was a woman who was working with a trainer and they were doing what's called a flexed arm hang, which think of either a pull up or a chin up, whichever way the hands are facing. And you're not going for the reps of pull the body up, lower down, pull the body up, lower down. Instead, the goal is you kind of hop up and you just keep yourself elevated as long as you can. So it's like one hold up and she hasn't even touched the bar yet. And she's saying, I can't do that. I can't do that. So don't fear what you haven't created yet. It's the favorite phrase that sometimes in life, the best problems we face are the ones that we've invented ourselves. So moving on then to the uh, penultimate, the second to last uh, principle here, which is that proper technique rules all. So I mentioned the difficulty in learning a heavy barbell squat, that my form was not good, my flexibility was not there, and instead it was this place of getting into the proper technique. And once the proper technique was there, then everything followed. So again, getting into the specifics, doing the groundwork, lay the foundation, and then everything will follow. So for a client, or even for you in your own business, as we set up systems for how we get things done, whether it's responding to email, whether it's interacting with clients, whether it's the ways that we work with in our process, the ways we follow up, as we create that proper technique, that's where that foundation really, really builds. 
And the final point here is an acronym that, forget where I first learned this from, but I love it. It's the acronym of the word FOCUS, F-O-C-U-S, follow one course until success. So it's this mindset of pick one thing and do it really, really well. Pick one thing and do it in the best possible form possible. So this is the waffling that I did before I locked onto the goals that I'm on right now, which was that every week it was a different program. Oh, I'm doing this this week. Oh, I'm working on gaining muscle this week. Oh, I'm working on losing fat this week. And just flip-flopping back and forth. And for me, it just became the consistency of choosing one specific outcome, locking onto that and deciding this is what I'm doing now. And really the results of that, the discipline, the success, the focus, the, the drive to do better. So it's the place that if you're in your business, you're kind of hitting everything all at once. Take a little bit of a step back and maybe then trying to do a dozen things badly. Instead, pick three or four things and do them really, really well. As we work with our clients, maybe they come in and they have all sorts of goals all over the place. And the simple question of what's the one thing that if you changed, you would be much better off? What's the one thing that if we got it out of the way, you would feel so much better and motivated to take care of the rest yourself? Follow one course until success. Thanks for listening to the Work Smart Hypnosis podcast at worksmarthypnosis.com. All right. Thanks again for listening. This was Jason Lynette with Lessons Learned from Strength Training. And I'd encourage you to head over to worksmarthypnosis.com and check out some of the systems that I've put together to help you to become an even more effective hypnotist. First of all, there's Hypnotic Workers, which is the full access to my hypnotherapy training. Everything from inductions to deepeners to strategies for change, plus real client sessions from start to finish. The content's all downloadable, transcribed. You can enter within all sorts of formats. Also, check out Hypnotic Business Systems. This is the full access pass to how I've built a six-figure hypnosis business. Everything from networking and live talks to some of the insane things that you see me doing online. Rather than trying to reinvent the wheel, learn from what I've done and model my systems. That is, that's hypnoticbusinesssystems.com. Also, join me and Sean Michael Andrews out in Las Vegas in March 2017. Check out masterhypnotistcourse.com, six days of accelerated hypnosis training in Las Vegas. That's masterhypnotistcourse.com. Check this all out at worksmarthypnosis.com. See you next time. Hey, it's Jason here, and I want you to be the first to find out as we upload new content here online. So do this right now. Click subscribe right next to this video, and you will be the first to find out as I share further resources, further downloads, and other really cool things to come your way. See you soon.